How's it going, everybody? My name is Swanee, and welcome back to another video. Guys, today we'll be reacting to Season 1, Episode 10 of Vinland Saga, Ragnarok. The last episode was the Battle of London Bridge, and oh my god, bro, the fight between Thorkel and Thorfinn, the camera angles were beautiful, the animation was beautiful, the way that Thorfinn was able to get that hit off was beautiful. That's one of my notes, uh, Thorfinn on his way, bro. Thorfinn is on his way to become an absolute animal. Uh, I mean, the guy has, I don't want to say held his own against Ashlad and Thorkel, but the fact that he was able to put up a fight at all, Right? I mean, when he was up against Ashlad, he caught him while he was off guard, but unfortunately, you know, he let his emotions get the best of him. Ashlad knew exactly how to play that. Um, so he was, but you know, he was able to get the jump on Ashlad. We could also see on Ashlad's face that he was also surprised, and so was Bjorn and everyone else watching. They're like, oh my god, man, you know, Thorfinn's grown up a lot. He's doing really well. Uh, he was up against Thorkel, able to chop off his fingers. He got him with the knife. He played dead while he was in his arms, caught him off guard. In my opinion, dare I say, I think Thorfinn's more skilled than most of the guys on Ashlad's crew. And I don't know if that's a hot take or not, I don't know if that's, you know, correct power scaling, but his size grants him that speed, right? He's not so big and bulky, he's not struggling to move, he's quick, his agility, you know, I'm picking up the battle awareness too. You know, I've noticed over the past couple fights and while he was in the field, we see him inner monologuing, you know, analyzing the situation, predicting what's gonna happen. Uh, I made the note that, <laughs> if he were to get caught by Thorkel, I was like, you know, it's already bad if he were to be caught by Ashlad. Like, he knew that. When I saw Thorkel, I'm like, bro, if you get grabbed at all, it's over. It's done. And then a minute later, we see him enter monologue where he's like, yo, I cannot get caught by this guy. I gotta be careful. And, you know, we see him enter monologuing. We see him, you know, examining the situation. We know his battle awareness is starting to pick up. He survived against Thorkel. He chopped off the fingers to set himself free. And he managed to run away. Although, a part of me wanted him to stay up there just because... Thorkel had realized that, you know, he is Thor's son. And also the fact that Thorkel really doesn't seem like, you know, the rageful, vengeful type. The guy is wild, which is my second note. He reminds me of Goku in terms of that happy-go-lucky fighter. He's fighting just to fight, does not care. He got bored of fighting the people that he was fighting, so he ended up joining England to fight or to get a better fight uh, against Floki. Uh, Ashlad and his crew pulled up and pretty much threw Thorfinn at him, and when that didn't work, they left. What if that means that Ashlad... What if Ashlad knows that Thorfinn is like one of his best fighters, right? In that fight, he was like, yo, Thorfinn almost got my ass, like he caught me off guard. You know, he's definitely a skilled fighter. So if he can't win against Thorkel, then that means none of my guys can win. I'm not sure if that's the correct reasoning, but if that is the case, that would be wild. You know, yeah, because if Ashlad was more confident in his men, then he would have had no problem raiding them, right? He's like, you know, if Thorfinn was able to get the jump on Thorkel, then that means that the rest of my guys who were even more skilled could handle him easily. Whereas, you know, the attempts with Thorfinn didn't work out, so they immediately, immediately retreated, you know, abandoned him, left him. Uh, you know, in the moment, I'm like, damn, that's pretty messed up. But at the same time, like what I was saying, you know, it, it is still messed up, but... It doesn't even feel personal from Ashlad. Ashlad just feels like, like I said in the last video's outro discussion, it almost feels like it is what it is, right? You know, you couldn't win, we have to retreat or else we won't win, you know, nothing against you, Thorfinn. Yeah, because when Thorfinn came limping back, it was like, oh, hey man, it's great to see you. We're gonna be heading to North Wessex. If you wanna tag along, you definitely can. It's good to see you. Uh, unfortunately, you lost against Thorkel, happens. But if you wanna walk along, you can. I don't exactly have an extra horse for you, but so, it, you know, it almost feels, which is my third note, Ashlad is so interesting. It almost feels like, you know, of course, I've done my, like, mini analysis of him in previous videos. I'm not getting that malicious intent. I'm not getting any hostility. You know, one scene I just cannot shake from my head. One scene I always think back to was when the young, young Thorfinn was over Ashlad's bed. He had the sword, and he was, like, about to swing it on him. And Ashlad was awake the entire time, yawns, and you know, that first fight as well, it was almost like he was teaching him, it was like, oh, you know, that sword's too big for you, you need something smaller. It's like, again, it doesn't seem like Ashlad's a bad guy, right, despite killing Thors, which of course I don't like, but at the same time, you know, I feel like we need more. We definitely need more to Ashlad's story because there's there's something more there. Yeah, Thorkel's a wild guy. We saw him get wide-eyed. We saw him, you know, get mad as they retreated because he just wanted more of a fight. Uh, but to my original point, my first note being Thorfinn's on his way to becoming a great warrior. Thorkel acknowledged him as a warrior. He's like, yo, what's your name? You know, you're quite the warrior. So the fact that he's even acknowledged by Thorkel, whereas, you know, I don't even know if the, the men that he's with, he's acknowledged yet. Um, you know, and also in something like this, I know it's a really big deal to be acknowledged as 
as a warrior to have your name be asked right because if you're just an opponent and you just get worked and it's really nothing then there's really no point in exchanging names on the battlefield but if two warriors come together and clash and you know they put up a good fight with each other you know they're then intrigued enough and then like you know respected enough to ask each other their names and that happened right so he's already earned Thorkel's respect uh, again Thorkel doesn't also have that malicious intent like I'm not getting <laughs> they're, they're like Astralite and Thorkel are, are like our enemies but don't really feel like enemies it's hard to you know build a grudge or you know get mad at them when it, it just seems so situational like it just seems like things are just playing out it doesn't even feel like you know a revenge story like like the only rage that I'm feeling right now is from Thorfinn and it's just because he wants revenge on Ashlad but that rage is fueling Thorfinn to another level we see him you know swim out he's angry uh, he dislocated his shoulder because Thorkel threw him around I think he sprained his ankle as well he's got a really bad limp and right now he's walking and it looks it looks pitiful it looks sad I actually feel really bad for Thorfinn which ties into my last note which is the ending of the episode we do see Thorfinn popping his shoulder back into place and limping on his sprained ankle <laughs> he's reminiscing over the fight saying what a madman uh, referring to Thorkel and he makes a very interesting note at the end being you know how can battle be fun or like what's so fun about battle and it is a very interesting point and I did dissect it pretty well in the outro or at least my own interpretation of it uh, but that is where we left off in the last episode I'm super interested to get into this next one just because it's called Ragnarok because in mythology Ragnarok is a pretty big event so I'm kind of interested uh, to see if this is going to be an episode where some big things happen uh, because yeah Ragnarok is quite the title so with all that being said that's all the notes I have over the past episode so without further ado let's jump right into Ragnarok okay is that Thorkel throwing more things? <laughs> yep. Oh my god, bro. I didn't realize he was that far. Holy shit. <laughs> Damn that bastard. I mean... <laughs> I'd be upset if I had to be up against him as well. I think someone said in the comments he was like 7-7. Seven, seven. So a 7-7 seven, seven guy with that build? Bro, that's stupid muscle. I wonder if Canute holds back his strength because he's a Christian. Because the king entrusted 4,000 men with him. So he must be the real deal. Oh, he's excited. Oh, yeah, he's got to be strong. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It almost kind of makes me think that, you know, Thor's maybe became Christian as well because, you know, he's insanely strong, yet he stopped being violent. Oh. God, I miss... I miss young, innocent Thorfinn, man. <laughs> oh. This must be what it's like to have kids and see them grow up. Oh, hey, Thors. This is the dream, man. The simple life, man. Oh, is he dreaming? Wow. Yeah. Cause Thor's... Wow. Bro, I got chills. Yeah, cause Thor's gave up the war. And give up everything to go raise a family and I think that's when he felt truly fulfilled wow yes Thorfinn remember bro remember why um, yeah he needed that dream Oh, 
Vinland, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I definitely feel like that's necessary for Thorfinn to remember and see. There's just more important things than revenge, man. And that revenge path also sets you down, you know, a place of morals and virtue that aren't fulfilling. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thorkel's a madman. True, Thorkel just goes where the fight is. Oh my god. These guys are beefing like that. One just called each they're just calling each other stupid. Oh my god, dude. What a joke. <laughs> I don't know if the guy with the the heightened ear listening power is the one to you Bro, this piano is so beautiful. God bro, I miss Thor's a lot. I know he still teaches, you know, Thorfinn in his dreams, but I wish they would have had more time together. Ashlad? Oh, wow. He's also... Seeing as how he's separating himself a lot, and also kind of self-reflecting, or maybe reminiscing, a lot like Thorfinn has, um... Leads me to believe that, yeah, I mean, there's definitely more to Ashlad. I've definitely known that, but there's definitely maybe more similarities to Thorfinn. Maybe that's why Ashlad's willing. I mean, of course, to everyone else, he's stringing him along, right? But there's that part of me that thinks that Ashlad might relate to Thorfinn a bit, which is why he's doing this. But there has to be some reason why Ashlad, I don't want to say special treatment, but is showing, you know... Maybe there has to be some reason why he's stringing Thorfinn along. And the fact that he's distancing himself a lot like Thorfinn, right? I mean, we, of course we know why, and we see that Thorfinn's always distancing himself. But, you know, we also kind of see the same in Ashlad a little bit. And I feel like there's something there, and especially in the fact that Ashlad was there first, right? Not only is it the fact that Thorfinn separated himself, but he's also come up to the same place that Ashlad's at. Somewhere far, somewhere distant, somewhere with a nice view. Just like the hill, right? The hill that Ashlad was at, somewhere with a nice view. I feel like... I feel like Ashlad. Damn, bro, there's just more. I just have to keep watching. Yeah, it's. Ashlad sees himself in Thorfinn, I think. It's like that dream did nothing for Thorfinn. <laughs> wow. Ashla's definitely come to peace with his death and himself in life. It is pretty crazy to think about. No matter how strong you are, eventually you're going to be bested. Oh, damn. Dawn in the Age of Twilight. Um. Ooh, yeah, I don't have a good feeling about this. 
<laughs> Some pocket change from the nearby village. That's crazy. Oh, wow. So they're down to 500? Oh, <laughs> because Thorkel and his group. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. I mean, I think Thorkel can take out a couple thousand on his own. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine being so strong, you get impatient, so you end up pushing. Like, you know what? I'm not even going to wait for you guys to come to me. I'm coming to you. Yeah. Damn! Bro, I mean, the guy is just an animal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no wonder there's only 500 people left. Bro, I want to see Canute versus Thorkel. It looks like we're about to see it. Wow! Oh, you know what? I mean, I guess that makes sense because Canute wouldn't fight. So he just let himself be captured. I mean... Time to make your mark, right? Maybe that's what he was getting at earlier. How those pillars were built by the Romans. Leave your mark. Okay. Oh my god! Bro, what? Why did he do that? Was he, I mean, was he a spy? Was I right? <laughs> Bro, I was not expecting him to just decapitate that man. Holy cow. We do have a pretty strong group, but to take on Thorkel and 500 of his men. <laughs> Bro, Ashla versus Thorkel? Damn, okay, okay. Okay, so Ashlad's like, you know, Judgment Day's coming soon, I'm getting older, so we might as well go out in a flashy way. Interesting. Maybe Ashlad's like, hey, you know, I'm gonna die anyway, it's gonna be by Thorfinn's hand or by Judgment Day, it's gonna happen eventually. Ashlad also comes off as the type of guy that has already come to terms with his death, you know, by the philosophy that he's talking about and leaving his mark and... Yeah, because Ashlad makes the point that the pillars were made by the Romans, who at the time were the strongest, and then the Saxons came in, who were then the strongest, wiped them out, and then, you know, the Normanis eventually now beating the Saxons, so, you know, the Twilight Era, they're all gonna die anyway, Judgment Day's coming soon, so, might as well go out with a bang, right? If Ashlad's like, hey, I'm gonna die anyway, I might as well go out beating Thorkel or, you know, something a lot better than dying of old age or at least in his mind. I really enjoyed Thorfinn's dream, you know, seeing Thor's and seeing Vinland and Thor's telling him, you know, what truly matters. You know, him talking to Thorfinn and saying, revenge is not what I taught you. Like, do you think that would please me? Do you think that'd make me happy? You know, think about what truly matters because this revenge path that you're on, you know, isn't good. It's, it's unfulfilling. So, <laughs> and it didn't even... And it didn't even phase Thorfinn. He wakes up from the dream, screaming out Chichuwe, and he ends up separating himself, uh, maybe to self-reflect or to think about his dream. And he stumbles upon Ashlad. Ashlad, you know, starts to give him some advice, uh, starts to spit some philosophy. As if they're friends, and Thorfinn does not like that. Says, you know, don't talk to me like we're friends. You know, one day I'll behead you. I need my revenge. Thorfinn did not pick up anything. <laughs> but then again, you know, revenge is a very strong poison, and... It's not exactly something you can just be like, oh, you know what, today, I don't feel like taking revenge on you. As a matter of fact, I, you know, but then again, actually, maybe it is. Like I said, you know, it won't be easy to stomach. Maybe it takes some time to build up to it. But at some point in time, you're going to have to drop the revenge path, 
like instantaneously, right? And I think maybe that's what I meant in terms of you can't do it instantaneously because maybe there is some buildup. Um, I guess it depends on how you're forgiving someone, but but as young and impressionable as Thorfinn is, dropping the revenge path probably <laughs> will be easier said than done, right? I don't think you know, he's just gonna wake up from a dream. Yeah, damn, I mean, you have this great dream with your dad. You know, you get to see Vinland, a warm area. You see out in the distance, it's beautiful. You know, Thoris tells Thorfinn, hey, you're my firstborn son. You know, you've got a mother and a sister. Take care of them. Like, they are what truly matters. Like, that is what is fulfilling, not this revenge path. You'd think after a dream like that, you'd wake up and be like, hmm, oh, maybe I am doing something a little wrong. But but I do think it's important for Thorfinn to self-reflect maybe a little bit more, uh, obviously, because the revenge path is unfulfilling and... After, like, let's say he gets his head, then what, right? It's like, everything that you've been doing up until now, I mean, obviously, we see in every single revenge story, once they get that revenge, it doesn't, like, they they, they still feel empty. They still feel like they need to that chase that something, and it's it'll never come, right? Like, that fulfillment has to come with what truly matters. But yeah, very interesting. Uh, <laughs> there for a second, I thought that coin Ashlad was holding was, you know, something close to him or something of value because we see Thorfinn clutching his knife that Thor's gave him. We also see Ashlad separate himself. So I thought them panning over to the coin or him staring at the coin was going to be something more. But it was not. Maybe that coin was something in the dirt that Ashlad picked up, which made him, you know, think about the Romans and you know, the things from the past. Uh, it seemed like an old rusty coin, so I'm thinking that's what it was, rather than it being something of value to him. And that whole speech there at the end from Ashlad, I'm kind of thinking that maybe Ashlad has some kind of regret. Maybe something happened in the past. Of course, you know, there's something more to him. And I think he does resonate with Thorfinn, or he sees himself in Thorfinn. And because he is getting older, and he's like, damn, now I have this kid who wants revenge on me. I'm only getting older. He's, you know, still so young. You know, eventually he will kill me and it's like now that you know Ragnarok or Judgment Day is coming soon he's like I'm gonna die anyway so instead of maybe I don't know bro Ashlad's a hard Ashlad and his motives are a hard read because like I understand him and I think that I'm almost kind of getting that like that <laughs> Iron Man 2 Tony Stark vibe he's like where Tony Stark has that reactor poisoning and it's incompatible with his body it's poisoning him you know he checks his blood we see that he's dying throughout the movie and he chooses to go out with a bang right he holds crazy parties he does crazy things with the iron man suit and you know he's reckless he wants to go out with a bang right i feel like that's kind of what we're getting out of ashlad i could be wrong um but I, i'm kind of getting that vibe with ashlad he's like hey you're gonna take my head judgment day's coming soon might as well go out with a bang right a lot like tony stark i'm dying soon anyway doesn't really matter a bit reckless if that truly is what ashlad's you know reasoning is then it does seem a little bit reckless you know <laughs> ashlight is complacent oh maybe that's why he's so complacent and nonchalant right he's like hey i know i'm getting older things are just happening it's almost like you know truly a pirate right he just decapitated that guy just to decapitate him it almost feels like that like complacency recklessness you know oh shit we're all gonna die anyway like might as well go with the bang ashlight is such a wild card i think maybe that's why I think there's something more to him too is because you know there has to be a reason yes there has to be a reason why someone so calculated can be such a wild card and do things you know <laughs> on a whim right like out of nowhere just decapitated that guy i don't even think he had to do that and maybe that's why the pirate life is so good for him right in in that role of leadership as well he's calculated he's strong when that guy came on the horse i wasn't getting a good feeling you know we got ambushed by a third party that one time and it was just a mess so i don't every single time that there is someone who's pulling up that isn't a part of our group i'm i am immediately sketched out especially in these times where you know well, I mean, Ashlad killed the guy, so you really don't know, like, you can't trust anybody in this time. This was pretty much, you know, a big talking episode, not a whole lot of action, other than Thorkel, you know, throwing rocks and shit, man. I mean, the guy is huge, man. Oh, yeah, crazy how he's able to take out 3,500 guys. I mean, considering how he can swing around the log and take out 20 like that, I mean, 3,500 is nothing. Oh, yeah, Knut not attacking Thorkel. I thought we were going to get a little bit of a standoff there. I assume he just, you know, didn't lash out. You know, they let him capture him. When Thorkel had asked uh, a guard or, you know, a fellow soldier or warrior if Canute was here, and the soldier said yes, Thorkel got really excited. So, dude, I know, I know Canute has to be strong, and he's just holding back that strength. So, yeah, so right now Thorkel's going on a rampage. Canute has been captured, and uh, <laughs> I guess Ashalad and the crew are going after, what is it, 500? Yeah, it's now... Ashlad's 100 men versus Thorkel's 500 men. 
Maybe Ashlad's thinking that he can go out with a bang if he can take out Thorkel. You know, that's a fight I want to see, man, because we've seen Ashlad and how quick he is when he went under the sail to get Thor's. I mean, he was able to best Thor's, but had Thor's actually tried, um, I'm, I'm almost certain Thor's would have been able to take out Ashlad. But yeah, like I said, I don't have any other notes for you guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, I have the full reaction on Patreon. I also have a Discord. Both of those links will be in the description below. And if you guys enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right. Hope you all all have a good one. I love you.